Well, good morning. You guys doing well? Good, good. I heard a variety of answers. Most people said yes. Some people were like, oh, I'm tired. I'm, you know, it's, I'm just glad you're here. I'm glad you're here worshiping with us this morning. Um, you noticed, Abigail pointed out, the floors are different. You might also notice the lights are a little different. And first, I want to shout out production crew. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Woo! They're the best. It's not their fault that the lights aren't working. Um, we got one new little piece of equipment. And it's funny how one thing can mess everything up, you know? We don't have a permanent building during the week, so anytime anything changes, that happens on Sunday morning. But thank you guys for working so hard to, to figure it out. We'll get it figured out for the future. But you know what? In a couple of weeks, we're going to be talking about reframing. And I was just thinking about this ahead of time. I was like, let's just use it, right? Like, the lights aren't working, but it's a great illustration because the computer knows what we're trying to send, the lighting computer that controls all the lights on a normal week. It knows what we're trying to send the signal, but somewhere along the way, it's getting messed up. And what we want to see happen isn't happening. And I don't know about you, but I feel like that happens in my life sometime. Where I'm like, I know what I want to do, but I'm not seeing that in my life. And Paul even talks about this in, in Romans. In the book of Romans, the apostle Paul, who was a church planner and started a bunch of churches, uh, was writing a letter, and he said, I do what I don't want to do, and I don't do what I want to do. Do you guys ever feel like that? Is there any honest Christians in, in the church today? Yeah, all right, a few of us. We know what we want to do, and we don't do it. And I think so often that happens because there's a battle in our mind. There's some, something that's a disconnect between the signal being sent and what's actually taking place in our life. You see, now the lights, it's like, wow, this perfect illustration. God uses all things for good. No, so it, it's what we're talking about, though. We're talking about our mind for a few weeks and how it affects every area of our life. Pastor Abigail kicked off the series last week, and she gave us all these stats and great information. And she concluded the message talking about those three R's. She talked about removing those negative thoughts, you know, canceling out the ad pop-up, renewing our mind, replacing those thoughts with truth, and resetting, not going back to the old way. I kind of want to pick up where she left off. And we're going to kind of continue that for the next few weeks or however long the series goes. But I want to talk a little bit more about renewing our mind. I want to get practical and talk about how do we actually change the way we think. Romans 12, 2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I love that contrast. Like naturally you're going to be formed to be like everybody else unless intentionally you're transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing and perfect will. And this is in a section of scripture in God's word where it's talking about how to live a godly life. Present yourself as a living sacrifice. And it's like, if you want to present yourself as a living sacrifice, you need to change the way you think. You need to change your mind. This is another great passage when it comes to this. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5 says, For though we live in the world, we don't wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. I love this language. It's pretty intense language. But what we understand from this passage is that if we're going to fight the war in our mind, we're going to fight differently than everybody else fights. And we're going to tear down arguments, demolish strongholds. And we're going to do that by taking every thought captive. I love the imagery of that. It's like you have guards standing at the gate of your mind, filtering through everything that's going in and out. And it's like, hey, I'm going to grab that. It's like when you're going through um, to Canada and they just like, there's a little check there. It's like, this is a good, you can come in or not come in, you know, and that sort of thing. It's like, we're doing that with our thought life. Is this a healthy thought? Do I need to get rid of it? Do I hold on to it? What am I going to do with it? We're going to take every thought captive. I want to talk about a stronghold for a little bit because it's not really like a, a term we, we use all the time. And when it comes to scripture, a stronghold is basically a pattern of wrong thinking. It's a place where the enemy has a foothold. He's able to, to keep you from moving into what God has for you in that area because of a lie you believe or a reoccurring thought pattern that you have. There's a war for your mind. 
What do I need to do with this thought? Do I keep it, discard it, change it, modify it? What's the truth behind it? The reoccurring thoughts of your mind are like the soundtrack of your life. I went down a rabbit hole this week, as I often do, you know, because everybody gets distracted sometimes. And I was thinking about soundtracks and movies, and I was like YouTubing movies that people had switched out the soundtrack to. Like they had changed it, and it was hilarious. Like Lord of the Rings, it's like Frodo and Sam and the whole gang, they're like running through the countryside and it's playing the Mission Impossible music. And it's like, bom, bom, bom. and they're like running. And it's like, that totally changed the feel. But I don't know about you that, and like, you know, if you have a scary scene and you change it to like upbeat music, it's like not scary anymore. It's like comical or like whatever it is. But like our thoughts are the soundtrack of our life. Like the things that are constantly going through our head is, is what is laying the foundation for how we're feeling and interacting in any given situation. And the playlist of your mind, that soundtrack playlist, comes from all sorts of different areas. It comes from your parents. It comes from your community, your friends, your school, your work. It comes from your in insecurities, from different life experience. It, it comes from your church. It, it comes from movies. It comes from all sorts of places. These soundtracks, these playlists, these songs get added to the soundtrack of our life and become recurring thoughts. The problem is we're not super intentional about that. And so we're left with a playlist that might not be helping us. We're not taking every thought captive. We're just kind of forming a playlist based on all of these different areas. It's funny how, how these things happen. Like if you study like the science behind it, like neuroplasticity and how our brain changes, it's super fascinating. And I like how we draw connections based on our experience. I don't know if you've ever had this with a kid where like they draw a connection that's not supposed to be there, but it's just like they're, they filled in the blank. Um, there, was, there was one of my siblings when we were growing up, really young, don't want to throw anybody under the bus, you know, my brother Stephen in the back, and it's definitely him who I'm talking about. But, um, you know, we were growing up, and we were eating around the family dinner table, and what was a regular pattern in, in our family was the food would get set down, somebody would be like, careful, it's hot, you know, because we're little, and we're going to touch it, or that sort of thing. Careful, it's hot, let's pray. And, you know, just like we're going to pray before we eat. Well, somewhere along the way, Stephen assumed we pray because the food is hot. And so there was a week where Stephen took a bite and he's like, we didn't pray long enough. <laughs> and then we were all like, what are you talking about? But this is, this is how our thoughts are formed. This is how we develop is we draw conclusions based on our experiences, based on our family, our friends, our upbringing, what truth we've been told from other people. And we form a playlist that becomes the soundtrack of our life. My question, and Abigail asked this last week, is are we thinking about what we're thinking about? Are we being intentional about it? Romans 8, 5 through 7 says, Those who live according to the flesh, we read this last week, have their mind set on what the flesh desires. That's like your natural nature, the way you just are. Like if you're going to live the way the world lives, you think the way everybody else thinks. But those who live in accordance with their spirit, with the spirit, have their mind set on what the spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. Does anybody want life and peace? I need that. I know we all desire that. And what Scripture is teaching is that if you want life and peace, you need that mind governed by the Spirit. That takes some intentionality. That's not our default soundtrack. Like, I know that many of us have struggled because we've given our life to Christ and we saw changes in certain areas, but other areas have yet to change or we've yet to see or feel or experience that change. And we're wondering what the disconnect is. And I think often... It's the battle of our mind. It's that we haven't changed how we've thought about something. If you want to change your life, you need to change your mind. This is, this is, what, this is a thought that I love, that what comes into your mind often comes out in your life. What comes into your mind often comes out in your life. Proverbs 23, 7, for as he thinks in his heart, so he is. It's a reoccurring idea in scripture that what we think about changes how we live. We think about training. We know like 
we need to train our dog or, or we think about training like our body, like we got to work out. And I try to work out. I'm not as disciplined as I always want to be. But something I figured out, especially in my 30s, is that it's not just the output, right? When you're young, it's just like I go for a run, I do this, I play sports, and it's just like everything's fine. You can eat whatever you want. But you guys already smiled because you know where it's going, right? You realize at some point it's not just the output. It's also the input. Like I need to eat healthy and work out if I want to train my body. But the same is true for your mind. There's disciplines and things we can do to be intentional about our mind, but we also need to think about what are we putting in it? What, what are we letting in that's shaping the way we think? Are we being intentional about it? I mean, I'm going to start in a really obvious place where Abigail ended last week is, is are you spending time in the word of God? Like that's, not, that's no shame. Actually, we're going to spend a week on shame during the series because shame is something that so many of us deal with. But like no shame, it's just like it's going to help you. It's like a healthy diet. You know, like some meals are delicious. Like we're on like a month away from Thanksgiving and I'm already thinking about it. Like it's like it's a buffet. It's all, it's so good. And some meals you just eat because you're hungry and you need food. And it's like sometimes in the word of God, the spirit's moving and he's speaking to you and it's so rich and it's so good. And you can know immediately this is changing me. And other times you read it and you're like, I don't know if that did anything. It's, the, it's still nourishing you. It's still changing the way you think. It's still adding truth to your mind. It's changing some of the inputs. You know, I think sometimes our just inputs are really out of balance. That we have so much input for everywhere else, and then maybe we'll just only read the verse of the day twice a week. And it's like you wonder why we're struggling with our mind. When it comes to that, we think about the input um, we need to make some changes. I like Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6, we did a whole series on it at one point. It's about the armor of God. And it says this in verse 17, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. It's the only offensive part of the armor, the sword of the spirit. And he's like, just in case you didn't get it, it's the word of God. Like if you want to fight back, you need the word of God. It actually goes on to say, that this is how, and then you have the shield of faith. The shield of faith is a few verses later, and it says, or the verse before, shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Like, not only is there just natural input from everywhere, but there's a real enemy of our soul. Like, the devil is shooting flaming arrows, lies, um, just like that, that feeling of like, I'm not worthy and all that goes with it. And the shield of faith is how we block those. And the word of God is how we fight back. We need that. We need that armor of God. And so I kind of want to stay in this like analogy of soundtracks and music and kind of just want to walk us through some helpful things as we think about renewing our mind and changing the way we think. And the first thing is share your playlist. Share your playlist. I don't know what, what platform you use. If you use YouTube music or Spotify or Apple music or if you have CDs or cassette tapes or 8-tracks or whatever you're using, we're, we're supposed to share our playlist. And what I mean by this is, is talk to somebody about what's going on in your mind. Like, get in community. I talked to almost all of the community groups leaders this week, and all of them were like, we had such good discussion. Like, as we kicked off talking about what's going on in our inner world and what we're thinking, people were vulnerable, and they shared. And our group, I loved how everybody was like, just even sharing it is helping me. They're like, I can so quickly believe this thing that I always say to myself, but even saying it out loud, I know it's not true. There's some power in community. Proverbs 27, 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. When it comes to sharing your thought life and sharing some of the things that are going on in your mind, I think when we share, we have the opportunity for somebody to say, hey, that's not true. And they're going to see it more clearly than you're going to see it. Because here's the thing about a lie. If you believe a lie, you don't know it's a lie. Like if you actually believe it, you need somebody else to tell you that's not true. You can't see it yourself. That's why you believe it in the first place. And the second thing that happens, and this happens not every time, but a lot of the time, they'll start to share some of their playlist. They'll open up and they'll say, this is, what, this is what's been going on in my mind. 
You have an opportunity to encourage each other, build each other up, share your playlist. The second thing is turn down the volume on unwanted songs. Turn down the volume. And there's a few ways to do this. We talked about this, and I I love talking about fasting. I think fasting is one of the neglected spiritual disciplines. And there's nothing that... I don't think it's like if you don't do it so often, like you're in sin or anything like that. I just think it's something that is going to help your spiritual life. It's kind of the assumption in the New Testament. Jesus, even in one of his teachings, is like, when you fast, and then he goes and talks about how to do it. It's like the default assumption that at some point you're going to fast. But when we're made up of mind, body, soul, spirit, and you choose to fast and say, "Hey, hey, body, you're not in control of me. Like my physical appetite isn't going to dictate my day and my life. There's a reordering of your priorities that happens. I notice that I get more disciplined in pretty much every area of my life when I'm fasting. That there's just something that happens where where my soul and spirit rise up. that, That the Holy Spirit in me strengthens me. That as I'm neglecting real physical food, I'm like feeding and thinking about how I actually hunger for God more than anything else. It's one of the ways to turn down the volume. The next thing is delete songs. And then these next few, I'm going to really slow down on a little bit. Delete some songs. There's some things you need to remove from your playlist. When we read that verse earlier in 2 Corinthians, it talked about taking captive every thought. That as something's going through your mind, you're examining it, and you're like, hey, that's not a healthy thought. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal with that. There's things that the Bible calls strongholds that you can just call wrong patterns of thinking. These lies you've believed that are holding you back from living the life God desires you to live. They're hard to recognize sometimes. Some of them are easy. They're on repeat all the time in your mind. And you know it. But then there's others that are more in the background and you've just heard them so often you don't even realize it's playing. Like you grew up in a family that like talked about money a specific way and it's dictating the way you think about money now. But you don't even realize it. Or you grew up in a, in a family that, that had an expectation around this area and, and you even hear their voices in your head when you do that thing. You know, we have these built-in strong song and soundtracks, and some of them are healthy and some of them aren't. And I'm saying we need to examine them and look at them and look at what's healthy. Learn to recognize the lie. Maybe your lie is, I'm never going to feel close to God. Like, that's for other people. Like, I know that he saved me, but like, I, I don't ever think it's going to be like, we're never going to be close. Or maybe, maybe it's like, I'm never going to get past worry. Or maybe, maybe it's, I'm, I'm not going to be able to overcome this specific addiction. Or maybe, maybe I'm always going to struggle with blank. We all have a lie, some sort of stronghold, something we believe to be true. So much so that you might even be arguing with me right now in your head. You're like, no, but that actually is true for me. That just shows how much you believe it. Get around some other people. Allow them to expose. Doesn't doesn't have to be that way. Does, that does not have to be true. In fact, it's probably already not true. Some of these thoughts end up becoming self fulfilling prophecies, because it's holding you back. You believe it so much that, of course, yeah, it's going to happen. It's you're going to step into that thing that you always think you're going to step into. Identity, this this goes back to our identity in Christ and how we view ourselves. Some of you have heard me share this illustration before, and I share it because I love it. So you'll hear it again, and it's fine. You're getting ready. If you're on the Dream Team, you know you're like getting ready to go to the Dreamies. So you're dressed up. You got all your clothes on. If you don't know the Dreamies, just picture a wedding. Dreamies is our award ceremony for our Dream Team. We have fun. We, We get dressed up. But pretend you're going to a wedding, and you did everything you could to get ready for it. You like got dressed up. You got a haircut, you got some cologne on or some perfume, you got new shoes, your hair's perfect. And then there's the, the other version of you that's like, you, you know, you, you haven't really kept up with any of that. You're wearing, you're wearing the clothes that you've worn for a week without washing them and all that stuff. And, it, it's that, and those both versions of you are walking through a mud field. Who's going to avoid 
the mud puddles more. The version of you that you view as clean. The version of you that's like going to a wedding. I don't know if you know like that. Like I do, that happens to me when I get new shoes. Like when I have new shoes, I'm looking everywhere I step. But after a while, when they're dirty, it's like, well, it doesn't even matter anymore. They're, they're ruined at this point. But that's, that's how it can be with an unhealthy view or thought about yourself. Is that you've gotten to the point where you don't see yourself the right way anymore. That you don't see yourself the way God sees you in that area. You're like, I'm unlovable. And God says, I love you so much that I sent my son to die for you. How can you say you're unlovable? You're like, I'm not worthy of it. And it's like, well, it's not even about worthiness. It's just like he chose to love you and demonstrate his love in that way. And you're like, no, I want to keep viewing myself as the dirty shoes. And he's like, no, but you're the clean shoes. We, we all have areas of our life that we're holding on to something we shouldn't be holding on to. That we have a thought that's holding us back. We need to delete those songs. We need to recognize them, label them, and say, you know, this is a reoccurring thought in my life. I need to get rid of it. But you can't just delete it. Because if you delete it, if a song is catchy enough or you've listened to it enough times, it just pops into your head. You know what I'm saying? I don't need Baby Shark on in the background for Baby Shark to get stuck in my head. <laughs> it just happens. And so you can't just remove a song from your playlist. You have to put new songs on it. You have to replace it with something. I had a conversation years ago, probably close to a decade, with a spiritual like, father in my life. And he was talking about this idea of lies we hold on to. And he is like, you can know something but not experience it. And as I was thinking about that this week in relation to this message, I was like, it's the difference between saying, like, I've heard that song before, but it's not on my playlist. Like, I know I'm forgiven, but I don't feel forgiven. Or I know that God has called me to do things, but like, I don't feel like I can actually do those things. Or I know whatever it is that you need to not just remove the negative soundtrack, you need to put a new truth in. To use more biblical language, you need to remove a lie from the enemy and replace it with the truth from God's word. You need, to, you need to be able to point out and say, this is an area that I've believed something that's not true based on God's word, but here is a truth from God's word that I'm going to replace it with. And you know what? Sometimes when you switch out a soundtrack that you've been listening to for so long, it feels really awkward. It's like Lord of the Rings with Mission Impossible. You're like, I don't think this is actually what it's supposed to be. And in that case, it's not, it's not supposed to be that. But when you're replacing it in your mind, you need to be okay with it being uncomfortable for a little bit. It's a new song. Your brain is actually rewiring. It's the neuroplasticity in action. Like I used to ride dirt bikes, and then when you ride it through the same, on the same corner in the same way, it creates a rut, right? And you, you learn how to ride in the rut. Our brain does the same thing. The more you think a specific thought, the easier it is to think that thought. The more you think it, the easier it is to think. And so when you finally stop thinking that thought and put in a new one, it feels really awkward. You're like, I don't even know if I fully believe this. This is a brand new song. I'm having a hard time letting that sink in. And so my, my spiritual father was like, you know, it's like Teflon. Like if you don't actually remove the old one, it just, the, the truth slides off. And, and I just want so badly for you because like this will set you free in so many areas. I want so badly for you to actually remove the lie and insert the truth. Like to actually uproot it. You can't just do one or the other. Like, you have to do both. Because if you don't get rid of the lie, the truth won't stay. And if you just remove the lie and don't fill it with anything, it, it won't last. It will come back. We have to add new songs. This is what meditation is biblically. The idea of meditation in Scripture is focusing on God's truth. Like, David in the Psalms is always like, I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. He's like, 
you know, I just think about the law. I think about God's word all the time. Or in Psalm 143, it says, I meditate on all your works and consider what your hands have done. It's, it's fixing your focus on the truth. Have you guys seen the, the other Karate Kid movie, the one with Jackie Chan and Jaden Smith? Not the original one? Yeah. Everybody's like, yeah, it's not as good. Whatever. I, I like it, actually. But there's this scene where they're, like, doing stuff, and, like, it's, like, the wax on and wax off scene of this movie. Um, and for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry. It will still make sense. Or if you, like, I forgot the movie. I don't care. But this is what happens. Jaden is, like, trying to get trained. And he's like, I just want to do that cool thing you're doing. And, and Jackie Chan's like, you can't do that yet because you can't focus. And then he's like, I can focus. And Jackie Chan goes, you need to fix your focus. Your focus needs more focus. And I love that. You know, that's like a silly movie antidote. But our focus does need more focus. Like, we actually do need to meditate on God's word more. Like, we need to get better at it. It takes practice. It takes training. This is a message that if you live it out will change your life. But if you go and do nothing tomorrow, nothing will change. Like, you have to actually meditate on God's word and let it slowly start to change you. You have to play that new soundtrack over and over. Meditate on the truth. Philippians 4, we're going to talk about this passage more in another week. But it's that passage that's like, you know, don't worry about anything. Don't be anxious about anything, but everything. Pray. And then he goes on to say, and fix your thoughts on whatever is pure on whatever is noble, on whatever is praiseworthy, whatever is good, that there's an intentional choosing to focus on the right things. And so when this comes to our mind and defeating a stronghold, you need to get rid of the old thought and replay the new thought over and over and over. In, in Deuteronomy and in other passages, the, the concept of playing things over and over is not new. It's like they talk about it. They're like, repeat this. Tell, it, tell your children about it. Like, you know, make it a normal routine. You need to retrain your brain. And so I want to get really practical. You know, I don't want this to be all on a certain level where you're like, I kind of get it. How do I actually do it? So I'm just going to walk through some. And this was awesome. Our small group did this a little bit. Like we literally were like, let's be vulnerable with each other. What's a negative soundtrack in your life? What's a reoccurring thought pattern that you have? And people shared some things. These aren't those things. Don't worry. We're not doing that. My small group, we told you what happens in the room stays in the room. No, this is just separate ones. This is separate ones. But I thought, let's go through a few and see how you do this. So if you're somebody who's struggling to know God's will, you're like, I can never know. I will never know. God doesn't speak to me. You know, you can have all of those different soundtracks. You need to replace that with truth from God's word. And this is, these are all of these antidotes that I give here, all of these new songs to replace the old songs, are just summarized scripture verses. Like different passages mashed together. My life belongs to God. Daily I seek him and daily he directs my steps. I know his voice and he leads me to his perfect will. Like if you need that new song, you need to like write it down somewhere. You need to repeat it. You need to let it become true in your life. Or maybe you, you feel like you lack confidence and you're like, I, I can't do what God's asking me to do because I don't believe that he's called me to do it and I can't and I, I'm just uh, scared. Or, you know, you have that Moses moment. Who am I? You need to say, my confidence is in Christ. It's not in me. It's in Christ and Christ alone because his spirit lives within me. I can do everything he calls me to do. You can't do it on your own. You need to recognize I can do it because he lives in me. I can endure any situation with God inside of me. Fighting, maybe you're fighting lustful thoughts. You need to tell yourself, I am not a slave to my lustful thoughts. I once was, I'm not anymore. That's not who I am anymore. You know, we're not just freed from the penalty of sin. We're freed from the power of sin. That doesn't mean you'll never sin again. It just means you don't have to. You don't have to. First John talks about if you sin, you have an advocate, Jesus. Pre-Christ, that's like our default. We just do it. That we, we do the wrong thing all the time. In Christ, you don't have to sin. And that's broader than just this. But you say, I'm not a slave to my lustful thoughts because God has purified my mind. I honor him with my eyes. I honor him with my thoughts. God is faithful. Even if I'm tempted, he will give me a way out. That's all from scripture. Job even says, I've made a covenant with my eyes. 
Or maybe, maybe it's something else for you. Maybe you find comfort in food and you're just like, that's just what I need. I just need to find comfort in food because I can't find comfort anywhere else. And it's just like my life's stressful enough. It's, a, it's just one little thing. And you can say, when I'm stressed, I turn to God. That's who I am. I'm, I'm just a person that turns to God when I'm stressed. I come to Jesus because he is what I truly need. And in him, I find strength and peace and comfort or you're battling worry. Because of Christ, I'm not anxious or worried about anything because I can cast my cares on God because he cares for me. I have the peace of God dwelling in my heart and ruling my life. And if you have the negative soundtrack of worry, even reading that seems like that's impossible and that's not even true. But here's the thing, that's all in scripture. I cast my cares on him because he cares for me. That's, that's in 1 Peter. And it talks about, I have the peace of God dwelling in my heart and ruling my heart. That's, that's Philippians 4. And because of Christ, I'm not anxious about anything because I can give it to him. Jesus even says, don't worry. It doesn't mean that you never have that negative thought again. You're just changing the playlist so that when you start to feel it, you go back to this. And guys, I promise you, I've done this in so many areas of my life. It is not me changing those things. It's God's spirit through his word changing those things in me. It has been the key to freedom in so many areas. If you're struggling with worth, you're like, I'm not valuable. I'm not lovable. I'm not worthy. God loves you so much that he sent his one and only son, that he died for you knowingly, willingly. That's how much he loves you. Your value is determined by the price he was willing to pay for you. He knows you. He knows how many hairs are on your head. He knit you together in your mother's wombs. He has plans and purposes for you, and he loves you. You guys see this? So as a group, what we did, our small group, we said, what's your soundtrack? And then together we would rewrite a new one and say, this is actually what God's word says. And here's the thing. It's one thing to know it. It's another thing to add it to your playlist. And to keep it on your playlist, you have to put it on repeat. You have to go over it. That's what meditating on it is. It's fixing your thoughts. It's not just emptying your mind. It's, it's filling your mind with the truth of God's word and saying, God, this is what you say. This is what I want to see in my life. This is who I am. This is who I'm becoming. There was a season in my life that I started every day like that. I would be going over the specific list that I had, my own list, of things that I was changing or God was changing in me and through me to even be more accurate. And I would just be like, God, I thank you that these things are true, not because of me, but because of you. And I would go through them. I'd say them. Some of you just need to get this practical. You need to go home and identify one or two soundtracks, talk to a friend about it, talk to your spouse about it, and then rewrite a new song. Not on your own. Don't just make it up. It's not just random positive thinking. It's, it's replacing it with the word of God. What does God say about this area? If you're in one, if you're stuck in a soundtrack and you're like, I don't even know what the other soundtrack is. I don't know what the truth is about this situation. Ask somebody around you. Send me an email. I'll send you, I'll send you some verses back and you can write your own. Here's the thing. These are a little long. The ones I just showed you, the, it works better as they get smaller and simpler and more personal. So those are some general ones. I want to I wanna share two that are mine, that have been mine in the past. And here's the thing is once it gets in your soundtrack, you repeat it a bunch, but then after a time, you kind of know it. It kind of changes. It's just like in there. Two of mine were I'm good under pressure. Because I felt like, you know, stressful situations, I felt like I would shut down. I'd be like, I can't. I, I'm paralyzed. I don't know what to do. No matter what that stress was, I just felt like, ah, I don't know what to do. And so I went to God and was talking about it. And scriptures that came to my mind were like that passage where Paul's like, I'm hard pressed on every side. I'm crushed. I'm persecuted, but not abandoned. And I was like, you know what? That, that's, that's my new soundtrack, Paul. I'm going to say what you're saying, that I'm good under pressure, that I'm going to be okay, that I can go through any situation. Philippians 4, 3, I can do anything through Christ who lives in me. Like I can get through any situation. So I'm good under pressure. You know what? I actually am good under pressure now. Like, because I've changed the soundtrack and God's word has renewed my mind. See guys, I think sometimes we leave it at such a high level that we're like, yeah, renew my mind. But you don't, we don't know what it means. Renewing our mind is changing the way we think based on the word of God. 
it's a little more simple than we think it is sometimes. It's allowing his spirit and his truth to change us. The second one I was going to share with you for my own personal playlist is this pain has a purpose. I've experienced a lot of hard things from a variety of different areas of my life, and you have too. No one in this room is outside of pain. Physical, emotional, relational, we experience pain. And I had watched too many people in my life have either pain take them out or push them closer to Jesus. And so I made a decision early on in my life. I'm not gonna let it push me away from God. It's always gonna push me towards God. And so I started reading about scripture and how God uses pain, that it might not be for him, but he can use it. He doesn't waste anything, that he works together all things for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose, that, you know, I can consider it pure joy when I face trials of various kinds because it's producing in me endurance and joy and perseverance. It's forming me. This pain has a purpose. It's not good. It's still painful, but it's producing something. So those are two of my soundtracks. I want you to write your own. Find a place where you've believed something, something that's holding you back, and say, God, what do you say about this area? How can I renew my mind? Put it on repeat. I want to close with this. John 8, 31 to 32. Jesus has been teaching, and there was Jews there who believed in his teaching. And he said, to the Jews who had believed him. He said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. And this wasn't like Jesus manipulating them. He's just saying like, this will be evidence. If you're actually following me, like you're gonna do what I'm teaching. And he said, and you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. There's areas of your life that you aren't yet experiencing freedom. But God wants you to experience it. I want you to experience it. Jesus came so that you could have life and life abundantly. He wants to set you free. He wants you to get rid of those strongholds that are holding you back. So you need to identify it and remove it and replace it with God's word. I wanna pray. God, would you help each and every one of us? God, would you help us to actually take the time to put this into action? that this just wouldn't be one of those weeks where we show up and do nothing, God, but that we would put this into practice. God, that even right now, you would help us to identify soundtracks. Even if it's something that we've been wrestling with while while we've been sitting here with you, God, would you just, by your spirit, say, yes, that is not from me. God, would you give us truth? Would your word speak to us? Would your spirit speak to us? Would your community, your body speak to us and help us to identify those, remove them and replace them? with the word of God, the truth about what you say about us. God, would we experience freedom in more areas and in greater depths than we previously thought possible? God, there's people who are wondering, I don't know if it will actually work. Would they try? And would your spirit meet them in that place? God, would they put it into practice? Would they meditate on your word day and night? Would they replace their unhealthy thoughts with the truth of your word? Would it wash over them and become a new soundtrack in their mind? God, that that what we put in would be what comes out in our life. That it's not even by our strength, but it's by your spirit. God, would you change us? Would we be transformed by the renewing of our mind? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I mentioned it earlier, there's those passages in Deuteronomy and in other places where they're like, they get really practical. Moses is like, hey, what I'm teaching you right now, like tie it around your finger and teach it to your kids when they go to bed and put it on your forehead and put it above your door and all of those. Some of us need to get that practical. Like we need to journal some of it. You need a sticky note on your mirror when you're getting ready. You need a a timer that goes off in your phone. You need something that's like a reminder so that you can change that thought pattern. Some of us, the, the feeling we, we have is we feel far from God. And maybe you, maybe you are in this moment. Maybe you are far from God in this moment. But the good news is that he doesn't want you to stay that way. That as we've talked about even during this message is that he sent his son so that you could have a relationship with him. The whole reason Jesus came as the Son of God 
is so that you could be loved and pursue a relationship with his father. He died to remove the penalty of our mistakes, the sin, the shortcoming, the ways we'd let God down. Jesus took the punishment for all of that. And we're left with the invitation to pursue God with our whole life. Say, God, I'm, I'm going to follow you from this day forward. The truth of God's word says that if we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, we will be saved. And so if that's you in the room and you at one point were following Jesus, but you're not currently and you need to rededicate your life, or if you've never actually made the decision to follow Jesus, I'd love for you to make that decision right now. That's where all of this starts. That's where freedom truly starts. And so if that's you, all you have to do is acknowledge your need. Say, God, I believe in you and I'm choosing to follow you in your own words. That's praying. You would pray something like this. God, you can even pray along with me in your heart and your mind. God, I need you. I, I've made mistakes and I've sinned against you. I'm distant from you. Would you come near to me in this moment? Would you forgive me of my sin? Would you make me brand new? Would you help me to start a brand new life in you as I choose to follow you today? In Jesus' name, amen.